Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome, welcome to the Ultimate Gaming Championship right here in Italy. This is the StarCraft II tournament. My name is Total Biscuit, play-by-play -play casting right here with the masterful analyst, Mr. Apollo. How you doing, buddy? It's good to be in Italy, isn't it? It is good to be in Italy. It is warm. It is not raining. That is just absolutely fantastic and very unusual considering where we come from. All right, are you ready to join this game? We have been waiting a long time, so we might as well just go straight into it. This is the Group A, Delphi, between Gurney, two seeded players put into the same group together, and this is going to be the first battle off within this group, and the map is going to be on the GSL map, Terminus Re. Everybody loves the Terminus Re, do they not? It's absolutely fantastic map. People seem to like the balance, and we've got a few more, and here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, welcome, welcome to the first game of the UGC Day 1. This is the group stages, and I present to you Delphi. He's in the blue trunks. He is playing Zerg right here on the Terminus Re versus his opponent, Goody. In the red trunks, he is playing Terran. I was actually thinking then, since we are, the, the players might be able to hear stuff. I was thinking, we please do not say where they have spawned, but no, you covered that well. And this is going to be an interesting map because it is a very large map and players, uh, there's so many different styles you can go on. You can actually be aggressive right at the start of the bat thinking that, oh, well, it's a big map. I guess my opponent's going to be, you know, expanding very soon. Well, at the same time, if we do see both players go for some extremely heavy macro style, early hatcheries, early command centers, and especially the way these spawning locations are, we are could, or could be, sorry, into a very long dramatic game. We certainly could. The Terminus 3 is quite interesting because once you take your second base on the Terminus 3, it's very easy to take the third. It's very easy to defend that third expansion area. It's vulnerable to drops, but not really to ground attacks since you have to bypass the second base in order to get there if you're staying on the ground. So uh, it's not, not something you really need to worry about. And as a result, games on Terminus 3 tend to go on for a fair length of time. Yeah, and obviously on that third base, we only have the one Vespian Geyser. Um, so that's not really optimum for a Zerg player looking to get a third. So we might see some different third base variations. But we actually see Goody here with the with the barracks at the front of the base rather than, uh, you know, inside the base, the, you know, the traditional standard style we see. And this is mostly, most likely going to be uh, two racks with a little bit of marine pressure uh, into expanding if it goes well. If it, do if it doesn't go well, sorry. If it does go well, then he would most likely even add on a third barracks to continue the heavy pressure. Yes, and Delphi going for the fast expansion right right here into his natural, which is what you'd expect from pretty much every Zerg versus Terran matchup, certainly over the last few months, the double virus coming down right here. And as you said before, Goody will definitely look to expand fairly early. And those double barracks will provide him with a nice little barricade to prevent any aggression into that third base. Love to see just how quickly he decides to take that one. And Delphi actually moves in here with the scout, sees the two barracks, sees the timing. Uh, and we'll go into the base just to, you know, confirm exactly what's up. And he does know. And now he kind of needs to start preparing for this. Doesn't want to get Overlord capped or anything at the start of the game. Uh, does that have that in production? We'll want to start to save Lava on the main hatchery, ready to bring out four, six links, depending on how aggressive actually Goody will be. And as we do see him actually moving down the map now with the SUV and the Marine to start being aggressive here. Oh, yeah. Certainly a possibility of placing down a bunker, maybe. We do have two more Marines streaming across the map to back that. I'll just keep an eye on that and see how it goes. I believe it's already been seen by Delphi, however. Delphi already falling back. He's got to suspect that early aggression, possibly with a bunker placement outside the base. Looking for a little bit of containment. That's exactly what's happening right here. Delphi sees it already. A little bit of firepower coming down on the hatchery. There's not a lot of pressure coming in there. Two SCVs and drones right there for a little bit of a skirmish. Chasing that Marine all the way off second. Back up right there, though. Goody micromanaging away from those drones quite easily. Takes one, takes two, looks for the third, loses the Marine, but there you go. Goody with two SCVs now pushing forward. However, Bunker is down, Zergling response is just on time. Actually, damage was done with that attack. Even though he didn't go into the base, didn't get a bunker up or nothing like this, he still took out three or four drones. Yep, uh, and I if you did. look at the unit counting station, 11 drones to 18 SCVs. And already, this stage of the game, we're at the five minute mark, and being that far behind already is not so good for uh, Delphi in this situation. And now he's just going to follow up with a lot of links just to uh, make sure that nothing does come from this. Goody bugging out as quickly as possible and I wouldn't really blame him. There are a lot of Zerglings coming in his general direction. It's a couple of Marines and SCVs that might not see the light of day ever again. He's able to escape, but only barely. Delphi losing a single Zergling. Nothing really major, however. Goody's going to back off, and he's now walling off with those barracks right there. Not even going to bother with the supply depots. Just lift.
lift up that barracks, let him through. Yeah, and he's going to completely wall off this natural. Uh, no lings are going to be able to get in there. Completely safe from any kind of aggression now. The only way that Delphi can bust through here is if he does decide to go for the, you know, the incredible Bangling bust we've been seeing over and over and over again. And if that does actually happen, we are going to need to see a lot of bunkers behind these barracks, even going for factory tech. Yeah, it's going to take an awful lot of Banelings to break their way through that, if I'm totally honest. Uh, barracks, of course, as you're well aware, have 1,000 HP each. Banelings are fairly effective at bringing down buildings, but it's, it's a significant expenditure, and I think that's perhaps the thing that matters most. Is it's going to cost Delphi an awful lot to do that. And Delphi actually has a lot of Lings on the map, and I think this is kind of faking out Goody, because if he does show these Lings, Goody will be getting ready in preparation for this Bailing bus, but at the moment he is only on gas, only I mean only on minerals, only just now going back to gas. Does he have a second gas? He doesn't, uh, and we don't have any Bailing Nest in production at all. We're going to have to see what kind of tech path he will go down. Will he decide to put down an early third, as we mentioned before, or will he decide to get up a second gas and go for that inedible uh, bailing bust. Uh, it's certainly a possibility. Uh, we've got Delphi cranking ahead now in terms of the economy. His mineral count looking very strong indeed. Slightly behind in terms of gas, but nothing uh, particularly major for him there. Certainly he's just chilling out. Nothing really going on right there by the Vespine Geyser. And they will no doubt wait for any kind of push from Goody. It's very unlikely we're going to see a push anytime soon from Goody, though. He does have a significant, and I do mean a very significant, set of buildings coming up in the main right there, as you can see. Evolution Chamber going down for Delphi, so he's in this for the long haul. Yeah, definitely. And we, like you did say, Goody is going for two factories, three factories actually, uh, and he's just playing very, very defensive. Doesn't look like he wants to go out at all. And at the same time, we have the plus one melee attack being researched by Delphi in his main base, and he's not even getting a layer yet, and it looks like he's about to go down and take his third base. Oh, yes, absolutely. He will uh, keep an eye on that one. Zerglings are about to get their little speed upgrade. Not that that's really going to help them. There's a wall of barracks in the way. Bunker behind it as well. Very defensive style of Goody. And I've been told that's actually quite common for him. Oh, Goody is a very defensive player. Uh, just sits back over and over again, waits for your opponent to actually come into you, make a mistake. And that's where Terran's strength lies. Uh, if your opponent decides to go into a battle that it, with, you know, with a sieged up army, you could lose a lot of units. And then he just counters attack. Uh, and he's very, very awesome at doing that and at the same time we actually do see a, a bailing nest going down. I'm not sure if this will be for direct aggression as we do see the lair being added on uh, and double guys has been taken. This bailing nest is surely going up just in case of any marine attack and he does have that and when the lair is done he will be looking to get that bailing speed straight up. Absolutely. Now, the question is, will he be able to hold out against what's coming in here? I mean, we see an armory coming up right here for Goody. We do have Hellions in production. That is quite a few factories, honestly, overall. Yeah, it is a lot of factories. I'm surprised he didn't decide to take a bit of an earlier third, uh, opting to go on the second base, and a lot of Hellions are out. And with this uh, army being added on, he will be able to go for the, in the, you know, the Thor, uh, the plus one attack, and at the same time, we do see drones being uh, transferred down to this third base. And still no units in production, only drones. A great to source, but actually, is that a great choice as a lot of Hellions are on the way to his base? Oh yes, it's good army supply as well. He's on 27 versus 18. That's heavily in favor of Goody right now. Aggression on the way to the base. Spinecrawler's going down. We've already got one. Second one is on the way. Queen's already moving out to intercept. No Infernal Preignited. Not that that would make much difference against Queen's due to the army type. However, bear in mind that Goody is microing very well here. Driving away that Queen. Queen's going to go down. Oh, it's on 3 HP, nothing left, and that into the mineral lines of barbecue going on right here. And takes the Queen out as well. Uh, that's very, very messy indeed. Will he get trapped in there, however? Taking out Zergly after Zergly. It's looking pretty good. Looks for the surround, gets it, and the Roaches finally nailed it down with that significant economic damage done. I know, but actually, even though you say that, I'm looking at the unit counting station. I think 55 drones to 50 SCVs, so I don't think it was as intensive as that. Uh, the, the, the most of the damage did go into the Zerglings and Roaches, and obviously that's not what Goody wanted in that plan there. He wanted to do a lot of economic dam damage, and he is going to take his third now. But it looks like Delphi is going to move out knowing that the majority of resources Goody had were in the Hellion, so he's going to go out, see if he can just pressure the front, force Goody into some mistakes. Mm, oh, bear in mind, he did manage to take a queen out there as well so that wasn't too bad an attack but you're right though he didn't take out all that many drones it was nice defense there by Delphi honestly able to quickly dart the drones away nothing really happening there and Delphi just keeping map control right now Goody just sitting back in the base siege tanks on the way heavy mechanized play coming up from Goody and we've got an infestation bit coming up for Delphi um, yes fancy stuff yeah he's definitely gonna transition into using the new infestors from the recent patch very very good 
uh, against Terran. And obviously, he needs to start spreading this creep tumor. The creep tumors around the map. It's very bad, actually, if you look at it. We're at the 12 minute, coming up to 13 minute mark now, and he's not really got that much creep out. And creep, having a lot of creep out is just so beneficial. You can have map awareness, map control. You're going to slow any timing pushes because they're going to get need to get rid of uh, all the creep tumors along the map. And at the same time, he does have this overseer scouting all of Goody's tech path. Absolutely. Roaches flanking around, dealing a little bit of damage to the Hellions. Goody sort of patrolling with that. Not that he can really do much with it. Almost lost that Overlord. Good lord, that is a lot of damage being done to him right there. If we have a look at the state of the economy right now, it's still in favor of Delphi, thanks really to the drone count. And he does now have a fully operational third base. Now going into a fourth as well, expanding fairly heavily. Goody with a third orbital command center coming up right there. Nice and safe. Doesn't need a planetary fortress in that particular position. Get his economy rolling quite nicely. Uh, unit count wise, we're seeing 24 Roaches and a few Infestors on the field as well for Delphi. Not particularly mobile force right now. He does have the speed upgrade, but as you said, no creep spread really. And a really great timing attack here because the counter to mech is just to mass expand. Your opponent's going to be sitting there on two or three bases, and it looks like Goody will be moving out with a lot of units, a lot of SCVs, and I just don't think Delphi has enough units. It's going to be very, very hard, but these Infestors could play a key role. Absolutely. Infestors recently got buffed against armored units, and that's very useful. We'll see whether or not... Actually, there we go. A mass fungal growth in the middle there. That is a a lot of damage, not quite enough though. Roaches coming in now, they split the force. That's perhaps the most important thing. He needs to stay out of the range of those siege tanks. Yeah, definitely stay out of the range of the siege tanks and slowly but surely, Goody's gonna move forward. A lot of damage done there, gotta be super careful. This expansion will have to be cancelled, and it looks like Delphi is going to go in here. Yeah, he's nailed another fungal growth, and he wipes his way through that force very nicely. However, the Thor's still alive, and a lot of shelling coming in from the back right there, and the Roaches are not going to be able to take that. I would think, as you said, he'll probably have to cancel that. I don't really see him being able to complete that, and even if he does, it'll go down in a couple of seconds' time. Delphi now really just heavy on the Roaches and not much else. Zergling's on the way out for him, and he is just about to complete his Spire tech as well. I know, I mean, he really does need a lot of units out right now. Goody's army looking so strong. These siege tanks very, very well placed. Oh yes, indeed. It is good stuff. Wow, that is absolute devastation on the line right there. Into the Thor line, but there's really not an awful lot left of that particular force. Couple of infested Terrans and a nice placement of those actually causing the siege tanks to shell themselves. However, it wasn't quite enough. And Goody continuing this relentless and slow march. Yeah, slow march coming in. Now he's actually advancing on the creep, but a very narrow, thin path for the Zerg to get any surround and it's not looking good for Delphi. Push back once again, and Goody is slowly marching his way to victory. Absolutely, this is the style of Goody. It's slow but sure, and it is effectively unstoppable. It's very messy for the Zerg players, losing tons of roaches every time he goes in there to destroy even one mechanized unit. And thanks to the presence of the Thor, Mutalisk is not exactly what I call ideal right now. Doesn't have any coming on the field. He is building some investors. He's got some more roaches. His natural expansion, however, under great for Hellions at the back line of the third base as well. And they run directly into siege tank fire. Nowhere to go, nowhere to hide. The economic line of Delphi completely devastated. And this is it. This looks like the final push for Goody. There are hardly any units left. 120 food compared to the 170 of Goody. Goody flying through in the state. And the stream of red units now not looking good at all for Delphi. GG, ladies and gentlemen. There you go. Goody takes the first game in this best of three series with a heavy, slow, but unstoppable mech push and not good at all. And I really do think, as I mentioned earlier, the creep spread from Delphi in that game just wasn't up to par, should have been out in the map, and that is going to be key into getting key surrounds uh, upon the Terran army to move out, to slow the push. And unfortunately, he didn't do that, and that was a huge mistake from him. And he's going to be at a disadvantage in the best of three as the group stages are being played out in a best of three. Uh, and Goody looking pretty smart. And I think, if I remember correctly, the second map is actually going to be on Metalopolis. Oh, yes. That'll be interesting for the Zerg player, certainly. We'll see how that one works out for him. But yeah, Goody's style is excellent. It really, really is. It's very patient. It's very slow moving and exploits the Terran firepower to its fullest. And notice he never, ever made that key mistake that a lot of other Terran players make, which is to overextend with the Sea Shanks and get caught out of position. He always had defense there and he lost barely any at all. Yeah, very, and it's so hard because the roaches are obviously a lot slower off creep and they just couldn't get up there and the line of siege, back, uh, siege tanks went so far back, extremely hard to get a good engagement against that and unfortunately Delphi does lose that map. Now he's actually just going over the replay, looking at where he went wrong and I think one of the key locations where he went wrong is that he decided to get a fourth and then a fifth and Goody expecting that knew exactly when to push out as all the resources had been put into the two hatcheries 
there, uh, and a lot of drones being made, and Goody decides to push out halfway through the third base, getting saturated. Usually, Goody likes to wait a little bit longer, but knowing his teammate's style, both, being, uh, both playing for ESC, uh, decides that is the right time that he can go in and kill Delphi. Yeah, it makes perfect sense, honestly. And that lack of mobility and that lack of map control really didn't help at all. And Zerg really needs to keep the map control against that kind of mechanized push and look for opportunities to try and pick away at it. Maybe actually get some mutalisks on the field. He had a few Thors, but they were quite spread out. He could have probably done some siege tank damage with enough Thors, but he didn't really have the unit count for that, unfortunately. And Roach as well. Roaches just don't work so well against that kind of mechanized firepower. Yeah, and I just think that um, you can't really um, go mutalisks list so much on this map because of that third base that you get so fast um, is that you're, you're going to be in a trouble because you don't have that you know the gas there you only have one gas geyser uh, and it's going to be very hard to continue with a lot of mutilist productions so there you kind of forced into uh, going for something else and that was uh, roach infestors and now on this map metalopolis we're going to have to see exactly what delphi's plan can be because if unfortunately for him does get the unlucky spawn placement of close positions we could be seeing delphi going zero one uh, in his group that would be unfortunate for him. Are we ready to roll? It looks like we certainly are. And we're going into game two right here on the Metalopolis with Delphi going in with a one game disadvantage versus his teammate Goody right now, who's already looking extremely strong. First time I actually got to cast Goody, and it's certainly a pleasurable experience as a Terran player. I do like to see those roaches, infestors, and everything else crushed under the mighty jackboot. The Panzer King, they call him. The undefeated TVT player is going against Delphi now in a TVC TVZ situation on Metalopolis. Uh, yes, and we bring you Goody, ladies and gentlemen. In the red trunks, he is uh, playing Terran right here on the Metalopolis versus his teammate and opponent, Delphi. In the blue trunks, he is playing Zerg. And this, like I mentioned before, is going to be a lot better for Delphi in this situation. Has not spawned in close locations, uh, meaning that the rush distances are going to be very, very short. So Goody is going to be able to put a lot of pressure on Delphi early on, and the mid-game pushes are going to happen sooner, and it just puts a world of hate into Delphi but he is spawned in the cross uh, position uh, over here and he's going to be able to expand a lot more freely. He's not going to have trouble with a third base and his style is going to be a lot better, but we do need to see a lot more an efficient creep spread across the map. Absolutely, we do need to see that happening. I'm getting a little bit of lag right here. Hopefully that will even out. The wonders of Battle.net, folks, that's just how it goes. Delphi, I would imagine, is going to expand pretty much almost immediately. That's what you would see from almost any Zerg player in a ZVT environment. Good with the Supply Depot at the top of the ramp. No big surprises from anyone thus far. Yeah, I think, well, Delphi's got to be careful with expanding first for sure. I mean, he's already scouted the top left position. All right, my opponent's not there. There's a 50-50 coin flip. Where my opponent's going to be, is he going to be uh, close? Close position or cross position. Uh, so he is going to be sending out this early scout before he actually makes a key decision on does he expand first or does he get the uh, pull extractor build or pull first. We're going to have to see how he does. He is going to go up the ramp now and not see anything. And so he knows that he's in a lot of a, uh, you know, a lot safer option. And we do see that he does decide, all right, cross positions, that's cool. I'm going to expo. Yeah, it's excellent timing as well by him. He's able to now immediately go into that hatchery, not sacrificing any time. It's all just ready to go. Goody walling off as you would expect pretty much any Terran player to do it and you know Goody's definition of a wall is a little different from most people's definition of a wall honestly on though on a map like this he doesn't really have that kind of opportunity they did on Terminus 3 to make an almost impregnable wall of barracks yeah I don't think he's gonna go for a fast expansion like the previous game uh, most likely gonna be a little bit aggressive to start off with and then go into the traditional Goody style uh, with very slow painful uh, mech pushes with the tanks the Thors and obviously the blue flame helions which melt links instantly Oh, yes. It is a flambe, a barbecue, whichever you prefer. It's grilling time, folks. It's a very, very good indeed. It's not what you want in your base if you are a Zerg player. Uh, not at all. And we do see uh, Delphi bringing down a uh, drone just to scout around, check if there's an... And actually, look at this at the same time, Total Biscuit. He actually decides, because he's, he's been in the base uh, of Goody, he knows there's not two racks, he's seen the gas, and actually decides to do this. This is pretty intense right now. That is a good decision, especially knowing Goody's style, very, very passive, can really exploit Goody's weaknesses. Yeah, it would make perfect sense, honestly. And that's really all the Zerg can do right now. Obviously, you want to try and stay one base ahead of your opponent. If you can stay two bases, ahead of your opponent even better. Goody knows exactly what his opponent's doing in terms of this expansion, but the question is, does he know anything about the one down there? Very unlikely. And right now we do see a factory coming up. We could perhaps see some Hellions. 
Yeah, he might actually build a Hellion to go out and scout. We'll have to see exactly what's he doing. Well, he either could build a Hellion to scout, he could go, uh, could go for the starport and put that down. Uh, we'll have to see. He's going to go straight for a starport, so we're going to have to see what he decides to do. One Hellion being made first, and most likely a uh, possible Marine Hellion drop to do some harassment. Uh, that's one option. The other option he could do uh, is possibly go for an expansion not too soon uh, with this uh, after doing a little bit of aggression. But nice overload placement from Delphi. Does have the one in the top left that could move down to see the timing of the expansion. Has another one here coming towards the back of the base. And Goody being Goody has these two Marines in position to stop any form of scouting. Oh yes, he is an exceptional defensive player. Certainly one of the best in the world as far as I'm concerned. And you don't see all that many players really going for this heavy defensive style, but it does work. It really, really does. Yeah, and we do see a medivac in production now, so most likely going to be uh, going to seeing some kind of drop. We'll have to see what exactly we do see. Hellions are moving around, scouting the map, but I'm not sure if you will go down to that third because you're not really going to expect something like this uh, from Delphi. So we're going to have to see if he does do that. that nice roach one. Yeah, it was, it was extremely quick, honestly. And it, it, I, I thought that perhaps that was a little bit too quick, but then again, he knows his teammate, so he, he knows his teammate better than we do. Well, it's very quick, but he's not actually using it. He's not. He's only just now deciding to build drones from it. So he actually halted a lot on the drone production and you see it's 25 to 23 so even though he got this early hatchery it's going to be a lot easier to saturate it faster but he hasn't made any good use of it yet and we do see a drop moving through the middle of the map now and then Link actually scouts it though that's huge oh yeah that'll certainly help him an awful lot he sees that coming on for him and we do have the medivac coming over very rapidly right now and my game is going crazy there we go it sorted itself out and Goody looking for the drop right here we got eight marines in the the base of Delphi. What can Delphi respond to that with? I don't know. This is going to be a very hard. A lot of Marines and an SCV in there too. He's going to have to use a lot of roaches. How many does he have? Three. That's not enough in production. Four are on the way, but they are very late. He's going to have to pull drones and this could be a world of trouble for Delphi. Could be in a lot of trouble here. Uh, it's going to be even worse for him because he's just ended up losing an Overlord. He's going to lose two more by the looks of it that are in the base. He needs to bring the spine crawler down as quickly as possible. One down. Supply blocked once again. A second one is going to go down very shortly. This is all Delphi really has right now. He's got those queens. They don't even have any energy, so no transfuse is going to be happening. A few more roaches to back it up right here. It might be enough to push it away, but he's taking significant economic damage simply because he can't actually mine. He's lost so many overlords, so many drones. He's not mining now. He can just pick up and leave. Actually, he's going to stay there. Uh, and will he be able to get away? I don't think he will. The medivac Ooh. is too low, so he's just going to do as much damage as possible. Yeah, absolutely. Sacrificing them for the glory. He takes one queen down. He might even be able to take the same. Focuses on a roach. Brings that one down as well. They're finally succumbing. It's very close in the roach right now. Oh, Queen is down as well. Goody takes two Queens for the price of one. That is absolutely fantastic play by him. And now a Banshee comes in to follow this up. And as you just mentioned, there are no Queens here at all. And uh, do we have any in production? We have none in production either. And this Banshee is just going to let loose on these drones. Yep, no layer tech, ladies and gentlemen, which means no anti-air. He does have an evolution chamber up. It's a little bit late to start placing Spore Crawlers now. They'll be easily spotted by Goody and eliminated. Although he does actually have one started. It's about 50% done. The question is, will it be focused on quick enough by Goody? He's currently chasing those drones away. He takes several for free. That Banshee already on 11 kills 12 now spore crawler finally ready but that is a huge amount of damage absolutely massive if we have a look at the income comparison you can see it right there and across the other side of the map, we actually have a counter-attack being launched by Delphi. A few lings and a handful of roaches, but I don't think he will be able to do anything. There is a wall there, and now he will be able to see it. Siege mode is almost finished for this tank. If he just pulls a few SCVs and repairs this wall, he'll be able to defend this quite easily, I feel. Yeah, absolutely. Delphi going up the ramp, trying to exploit the fact that Siege Tech is not actually sorted out as of yet. Still quite a lot of fire coming in. They do do a fair amount of damage even without that Siege Tech. They'll be able to chew through them quite easily. There we go, now sieged up. And uh, that's a little bit dangerous. At least he knows that he can't drop down there. And we should have a look at the bottom expansion, which has finally been discovered by Goody. We've got two Banshees right now. That hatchery is going down by the looks of it. 200 HP and falling rapidly. We've got no Queen. There we go, Queen now in there and annihilated very rapidly. That's not looking good at all. No, the hatchery is going to go down and he's going to lose and force the cancel on that queen. A Banshee does go down in consolation, but that is not good. He's lost this economic advantage by having this third hatchery at the same time. Oh, actually, the command center has not been put down by Goody and that is not good at all. And Delphi, even though he's under a lot of pressure, is still at 45 drones to 36 and is still somehow in this game. He absolutely is. Those Banshees actually haven't done as much damage as you'd hope. I mean, that one's done no kills and we've got three on that one. There's a flank 
Seeking Maneuver, two Queens moving in, and in the meantime, Roach is focusing fire, but they're taking an awful lot of shelling right here from the cliff. We've got Sea Strike in there. He moves in quite close to the mineral line and actually ends up losing a couple of SCVs due to his own friendly fire. And this is really nice by Delphi now, even though the storm has calmed down. He is in a great situation. He's got this third backup almost. And at the unit counter station, 53 drones throughout this entire pressure because it was only air. He wasn't forced into making a lot of lings, a lot of roaches, nothing like that. Only drones, queens, and spore crawlers. And that is really good for him. Yeah, roaches are finally going to get torn apart. There's nothing he can really do there. Tries to take a couple of extra SCVs just out of spite more so than anything else. But if we have a look at the ink in comparison right now, it's in Goody's favor, although that's mostly due to mules. If you have a look at the unit composition, you you will see 56 drones to 40 SCVs. It's fairly significant. And because of Goody's style, we know he loves this slow mech. And, and because uh, Delphi kept him off for so long uh, on off this second base, he just doesn't have the gas to warrant his style. As we can see, the minerals are up to 1,200 for Goody. And even though players will be like, you know, that's really bad, you can never go that high, he just doesn't have the gas. And he will even look to expand quite soon, I'm sure. Exactly. He, he needs to start spending it on something, and he really doesn't have the production facilities. Obviously, he's not wanted to build any extra because he simply couldn't support them on that one base. Denied that one base by so long for Delphi, and as you said before, it did seem like the amount of economic damage that was done to Delphi would be very significant, but in reality, he hasn't actually lost that much. Yeah, I mean, he kept reinforcing drones after drones, and Goody couldn't really back up the advantage he was taking by having his own good, strong economy to fall uh, back on once the harassment was finished. I mean, he tried to and couldn't expand. Delphi kept him off that expansion. That was really nice. Two Banshees, though, are moving down. Going to pick off this fourth and slow that down. Bear in mind, though, the layer tech is up, so those Banshees' lives might not last too long. However, Hatchery taking an awful lot of firepower right now, dipping into the red. It's not what you want to see cancelled, because, well, what choice did he have? And once again, I feel that Delphi just isn't creep spreading well enough. I mean, he's been under a lot of pressure for sure, but 14, 15 minutes, he needs to throw these creep tumors down everywhere, needs to control the map, and these two queens are being a pain. And that's what happens when you don't go for Mutalis. You just lose air control. You don't have anything to stop drops, to stop Banshees. And really, Goody is exploiting that with these two Banshees. Four kills on one, five kills on the other, just completely gaining map control here. Hydralisks are on the way, though, folks, as you would expect at this stage of the game. They'll be able to deal with those batteries. But bear in mind, again, as you were saying, the lack of creep spread is not going to help the Hydras either. I mean, yeah, I'm questioning why he decided to go for Hydras, uh, but it looks like the decision has now been made for me. He's got the Ventral Sacks in production, and it looks like he will be going for some sneaky drops with the Hydras because of the creep spread, because of the immobility of these Hydras. He's going to be able to drop them around and, do, and use them a lot more efficiently. And these three links are here to scout this third from Goody. Oh, yeah, they can see it. They don't block it. Oh, there they do. There we go. We're not having any of that. Thank you very much. He's going to be forced to at least move out and deal with that. Thankfully, he does have a few Hellions lying around for that particular purpose. And we do see some uh, rather heavy mech play once again from Goody. <laughs> Look at how many siege tanks he already has. He's already sitting on nine as it is. I wouldn't want to go anywhere near that right now, but the drop strategy might be effective considering how immobile this force is. Yeah, I mean, we're going to have to see how effective if it can be, especially because the mech army uh, can get caught out of position a lot. Uh, that could be really hard for Goody to defend, uh, and they're so slow themselves at moving. So that could be a really, uh, you know, an exploit uh, here for him to use. And at the same time, this planetary fortress is almost up. Two Banshees still roaming the map, gaining a lot of map control, uh, and they might be able to do a little damage. Two Hydras are here to defend or try to stop these Banshees from incoming, but I'm not sure that will be enough. Well, we've got more Hydras right there, and his creep spread is starting to actually get going quite nicely. He's got things rolling. Hydralisk is already on the move. Doesn't have the range upgrade for them as of yet, but he does have a damage upgrade. That will certainly help him just a little bit. Loses one Hydralisk. Great micromanagement right there by Goody. A nice dodge, and now applying pressure to yet another hatchery. Yeah, and that's really nice. Using these Banshees from start to finish in this game. I think one of the big mistakes so far that Goody hasn't done, he hasn't actually decided to go for plus one attack, which is kind of huge. Combined, thinking about it, um, he's gone for mech. He needs plus one attack. He's got the armor. It's very possible to do, but because he's been under a lot of pressure early game, he's just kind of missed that timing automatically and not even thinking about it. Now he has got this third base up. Wouldn't be surprised if he tried to drag it up to take a fourth base quite soon and cut this map in half, as that's where Goody's uh, strengths lie. Uh, I mean, 
meantime, Goody decides enough is enough by the looks of it. Pushing forward right here with a very, very competent force of Siege Shanks. Sing on 10. He does have a Thor to back it up. And he does have a second one moving in as well. This is a hard, hard push. We've got Hellions in the mix. We've got Marines. He is going forward with everything he's got. And the question is, does Delphi have what he needs to defend this? I don't know. But maybe he could uh, load the Overlords and drop on top of the Siege Tank army. That could be really efficient. That's exactly it, what he's doing. And by it the looks, looks like he will be doing this. And this could be very really smart. good to play against this mech style. They're very smart. That's an extremely good idea. He might end up sacrificing this uh, particular hatchery right here. But look at this. Here comes the flanking maneuver from the sky. We're going to see raining zerglings. Hallelujah. It's looking messy. Oh, there you go. So many siege tanks decimated very rapidly right there. An excellent strategy right there by Delphi. But still, does he have what he needs? It doesn't look like he does. No, he doesn't GG. have enough. There I mean, you go. Even though the Overlords carried so many units, he just didn't overall have the swarm there to take that game. And unfortunately, as soon as those units landed, the, the blue flames, all the Marines just took down everything one unit at a time as they left them Overlords. And Goody takes down his first game in the group stage with quite a clear 2-0 victory. He's extremely strong, honestly, in terms of his entire play style. He looked solid throughout. He responded very calmly to pressure. And Delphi, to his credit, put an awful lot of pressure on him, which is really what you need to do to somebody who is developing so slowly, a very macro, very defensive style of play. Unfortunately, once again, once Goody rolls out, or once his war machine is on the field, there's very little you can really do. There is very little to stop that bulldozer when it is heading towards the base and there is nothing. That slow push is so deadly. Over and over again by Goody, we're seeing in every matchup, he is really utilizing the way that mech is being played across the different servers.